Ah, the overrated fire lizard. Just kidding. I'll bet some of you are already upset by that comment. And to be honest, why wouldn't you be? Charizard is one of the most popular Pokemon of all time. The question is, why though? Today, we're gonna find that out as I go through all Pokemon media to solve this mystery. So without any further ado, let's just hop right in. Before that though, if you haven't already, head over to my new what if slash fanfic channel where I read anime fanfics. If that's up your alley, then consider heading over there. Link will be in the description below. Anywho, the birth of Pokemon started with three games. Pokemon Red, Green, and Blue, being released in the late 90s. Pokemon took the world by storm and is still extremely popular to this day. Since Pokemon's debut, Charizard followed suit. Charizard was the cover Pokemon of the Pokemon Red version. And out of all three of these covers, Charizard stuck out the most. Charizard's design is based off of a physical dragon. Just based on that concept alone is what drew a lot of people in. Most of Pokemon's audience were young kids. And to me, having a badass looking dragon would make me want to pick up the game too. I would know, Red was my first Pokemon game. Don't I look ecstatic? Charmander is one of the starter Pokemon the player has access to in the game, and it evolves into Charizard as the player progresses. The design concept alone is enough to catch someone's attention. It's simple and badass, so this appealed to a lot of teenagers and young kids at the time. Some years later, remix of Charizard as the box cover once again came out being Fire Red and Leaf Green. Fire Red naturally being the Charizard one. So Charizard is one of the cover Pokemon for Pokemon's most popular set of games. Outside of the games though, the Pokemon TCG was another factor that heightened Charizard's popularity. Pokemon released its original base set, and it just so happened that Charizard had the highest HP of any Pokemon released being at 120. Not to mention it was holographic, and the overall design of the card looked pretty slick and amazing, making it one of the most popular cards of its time. At its time? You're pretty funny, Mystic. This original PSA grade Charizard is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I feel this is a huge part of why Charizard gained a lot of its popularity. A lot of people would kill to have one of these cards. If someone wants to loan me a couple hundred grand, I promise I'll pay you back, but uh, I want that Charizard. In the past few years, the Pokemon TCG gained a ton of popularity, with nearly every target being sold out for quite a bit of time. Thank you, Logan Paul. This wave of popularity also garnered more of Charizard's popularity in the process. Some very popular YouTubers were spending loads of money in an attempt to pull this card. But even taking the present day out of the equation, the base set Hollow Charizard was just a coveted card that made you the luckiest kid in the world if you happened to pull it. Remember, the TCG didn't have all the fancy gimmicks it has now back in the day. The best card you could pull was a Hollow and the best card to pull was that dopest could be Charizard. I can honestly make an entire video specifically talking about the TCG, but that's out of my area of expertise. Let's take a look at another form of Pokemon media, the Pokemon anime. The anime's main protagonist, Ash Ketchum, obtained a Charmander in the very early parts of the series. As the original series progressed, Ash's Charmander slowly evolved into Charizard. Once it evolved in the Charmeleon though, it would no longer obey Ash. Throughout a good part of the series, we saw Charizard perform some pretty goofy antics, and even saw it sleep in a series of important battles for Mr. Ketchum. However, at some points, even when it didn't obey Ash, we saw it come in clutch. This can be seen heavily in his battle against Blaine, for example. For a good while though, Charizard didn't respect Ash. Eventually though, Ash and Charizard grew closer to each other. In a battle in the Orange Islands, Charizard pulled through. And from then on, we saw Charizard show up when Ash needed it. Charizard is one of Ash's most powerful Pokemon. And even to this day, it still is. What makes the anime's portrayal of Charizard so popular is the fact that whenever Charizard showed up, we knew as the viewer, sh** was about to go down. Charizard has slash had the ability to make the viewer sit on the edge of their seat. Charizard hypes the audience up, and that's the message Charizard created for itself every time it hit on the screen. 
As a kid, I remember watching Pokemon 3 and seeing Ash nearly fall to his death. Guess who rescued him? Ash vs. Gary? Who was the main star? Ash vs. Claire? Need I go on? Charizard has the ability to make the viewer get excited, because that was the way the anime made Charizard to be. It's practically a superhero in the Pokemon universe. Ash Ketchum and his Charizard are a huge part of why Charizard still preserves as one of the most popular Pokemon today. Since Ash's Charizard, a few other notable trainers in the anime have also popularized Charizard, including Alon and Leon. Especially Leon, considering he's the most powerful trainer in the entire Pokemon world. Oh, and how could I forget Red? Because of Charizard's popularity, it's gained a few power-ups and forms that other Pokemon haven't gotten to experience. In Generation 6, we were introduced with Charizard Y and Charizard X. It received two forms over one. In Gen 7, it became a flying ride Pokemon, becoming the Pokemon that transport you across Alola. That's just small time though. In Gen 8, Charizard was introduced with yet another form. This form being its Gigantamax form. And I have to say, it's pretty freaking dope looking. Now with everything I stated, you have an idea of how Charizard is still one of the most popular Pokemon. Let's see how that plays out statistically though. On Pokemon Day in 2021, for Pokemon's 25th anniversary, the Pokemon Company conducted a poll and asked fans to vote for their favorite Pokemon. Surprisingly, on this poll, Charizard only came in 18th place out of 30, with 16,243 votes out of 1.2 million. The most popular was surprisingly Didene. It's interesting because this was a Japanese poll specifically, which just goes to show that different countries will fall in love with wildly different Pokemon. That said, I definitely feel Charizard is more popular in North America versus other parts of the world. In Canada, Charizard is the most Google searched Pokemon, where in the States, Gengar takes that trophy. Apparently though, on a global scale, Charizard is at number 2 behind Pikachu, which isn't really surprising considering it's the series mascot. On this Screen Rant article, it mentions Charizard taking 4th place according to a popularity poll. So across quite a few polls, Charizard still stands very popular. I think Charizard is so popular in the West just due to how badass dragons are. Think about it, they're popular in movies, cartoon shows, etc. Western media really made its design concept a lot more appealing to fans where dragons, I feel, were just more popular. Like I said, its design is just simple and badass. Anywho though, that concludes my reasoning for why I think Charizard is so popular amongst the Pokemon fanbase. One of the questions I think I will be getting is, do I like Charizard? To put it simply, yes I do. However, I do agree with some of the fanbase that Charizard gets a lot of spotlight and other Pokemon deserve that light as well. At the end of the day though, Charizard makes the Pokemon company money. It's practically Pokemon's alternative mascot, so of course they are going to give it a lot of attention. So I think rather than be upset that Charizard is so popular, let's thank Charizard for making Pokemon popular and still keeping the franchise we all know and love alive and well. Let me know your thoughts down below though. How do you feel about Charizard? Do you love it? Do you think it's overrated? Or are you in between? I would love to hear your opinions down below, so please let me know. Welcome back to the outro, folks, your favorite part of the video. Thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. We made it through the end of the 8th generation, and now we begin the long trek into late 2022 where Pokemon Scarlet and Violet await us. It's a whole new world we'll live in, but we still gotta catch them all. However, there's still a ton of videos to do and experiences to have until then. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and the Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. If we get the 10k followers on TikTok, I'll be doing a viewer's choice video. If you like Genshin Impact, check out my Genshin channel Tebachinary. So if you all enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.